So last week, the president of the United States, Joe Biden, fired off a warning to a private company, Kellogg Cereal, which has 1,400 employees who are out on strike. And he told them, do not try to replace those workers. Quote, permanently replacing striking workers is an existential attack on the union and its members' jobs and livelihoods. I strongly support legislation that would ban that practice. Now, for over two months now, the workers at four Kellogg cereal plants in Michigan, Nebraska, Pennsylvania, and Tennessee have been demanding enhanced benefits and pay after working longer hours during the coronavirus pandemic. And a main issue for striking workers has been the company's created a kind of two-tiered wage system which offers lower pay and fewer benefits to newer workers. This is fairly common uh, in a lot of places. It's a way of kind of breaking up the solidarity between the two groups. Last week, members of the union rejected a tentative contract negotiated by their own union. Today, Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont wrote this opinion piece for Fox News titled, Kellogg Strike, Workers Must Get Our Support. In the first line of the piece, he announced his plans to head to one of those striking plants in Battle Creek, Michigan, tomorrow. Well, late this afternoon, we got news the union has now reached another tentative deal. This means members will meet tomorrow to discuss the deal and vote on the new proposal on Sunday. And Senator Bernie Sanders, the chair of the Senate Budget Committee, joins me now. Uh, good to have you on, Senator. Why, why do you feel this is important enough to go out to, to Battle Creek tomorrow for? Because it is a struggle against the kind of corporate greed, Chris, that we are seeing all over this country. It's the same old story. This is a company that last year made $1.4 billion in profit, a company that can afford to provide $12 million in compensation to its CEO. And meanwhile, the reason it made this money is because during the pandemic, these workers, unbelievably, they were working 50, 60, 70 days in a row, sometimes 12 hours a day in order to feed America. I talked to a guy there who worked 120 days in a row. Can you imagine that? That's totally insane. So these workers literally put their well-being, their families, their lives on the line in order to feed America, in order to keep the company going. And then the company's response was to the strike is, well, we're going to cut all of your health care benefits. So you got workers out there who have no health insurance now. We're going to bring in replacement workers. Oh, yeah, I know you have... You have worked for me for your whole life. Maybe your dad, your mom worked for me. That's the case there. People have de devoted their entire adult lives to Kellogg's, and now they're prepared to replace them. And then, on top of that, they're planning to ship 275 more jobs to their plant in Mexico, where the starting wage is 97 cents an hour. So what Kellogg's is doing, the rich get richer, the CEO does fine, Dividends are high, and yet workers are giving up their lives in many respects. I don't know what it's like to work 120 days yeah. uh, in a row. Yeah, I want to uh, just emphasize something you said there, because I think it's an important part of the story. You said it's a, it's a same old story. It is in many ways the same old story. But there's, a new, there's something new here, which is, you know, a year and a half ago, when the whole world, I mean, literally the entire world, billions of people were on essentially stay-at-home orders, People, millions of people in this country, millions of people, people would go to the grocery store once a week <laughs> to feed their family when you couldn't go out and do anything. And there was food in the aisles. And the reason there was food in the aisles was because there were workers at the grocery stores who were showing up every day in the midst of a once in a century pandemic. And at the other end of that supply chain, in Battle Creek, Michigan, or wherever, there were people in the factory day in, day out in the midst of a pandemic making sure that food got made. I mean, these are those, literally those people who fed the country during the pandemic. They are, they were called appropriately so heroes. These are heroes and heroines feeding us, working insane hours. And now because they want better wages, they want to end this disastrous two-tier wage system by which younger workers earn substantially lower wages and benefits than older workers. These workers are standing up for the younger generation. Yeah. Real solidarity, doing exactly the right thing. The company responds in an incredibly abrasive and, and outrageous way. So I am proud. I mean, these people are really heroes and heroines. They are incredibly courageous. 
And what they are fighting against, that type of corporate greed, is what we are seeing all over this country during the pandemic, when thousands of workers died because they had to go to work yeah. in order to feed their families. The billionaire class made huge amounts of money. So I am proud to stand with these workers in their union uh, tomorrow. You're, you're standing in, inside the Capitol where I hear your, your voice reverberating off the marble. And so I have to ask you uh, as well about uh, what, what looks like uh, uh, what will be the end of the year without the Build Back Better agenda passing out of the Senate. Um, there's multiple interpretations of the ongoing conversations with Joe Biden, and Joe Manchin, uh, President Joe Biden and co-president Joe Manchin about uh, whether whether this is going to happen. And I guess there's two ways to interpret it. One is Joe Manchin is essentially acting in bad faith and kicking the can until it can die. And the other is the fact he's still talking, the fact he's still engaging on details means that there is an actual negotiation ongoing. And which of those two are your interpretation? Well, let me just say this, and I, and I hope everybody in America understands it. You got 50 people in the Republican caucus. We have gotten no support from them to lower the cost of prescription drugs, to expand Medicare, to include dental, hearing, eyeglasses. No support from them for child care, for housing, which is all in this Build Back Better plan. No support to deal with the existential threat of climate change. So you got 50 Republicans yeah. who are not prepared to do anything for the environment of working families. You got 48 people in the Democratic caucus who are prepared, and a president of the United States prepared to think big. And you have two Democrats who, in my view, are kind of acting like Republicans. And uh, to me, I respect other people's points of view, but I do not respect the arrogance of any member of the Senate who says, you know what, I'm going to torpedo this entire bill, supported overwhelmingly by the American people who are sick and tired of paying outrageously high prices for prescription drugs, sick and tired of seeing billionaires not paying their fair share of taxes, tired of seeing people sleeping out on the street, kids and families not being able to enjoy decent quality childcare at an affordable cost. And you got two people who say, you know what, hey, if you don't do it my way, I don't care what the president wants, I don't care what 48 of my colleagues want, it's my way or the highway. And that I regard as arrogance. You can disagree. Look, I have disagreements, yes. as you well know. All right, You fight for your ideas, but you don't say my way or the highway. And that right. I feel very strongly about. Well, we'll see where we end up, whether we're on the highway or not. Senator Bernie Sanders headed to Battle Creek, Michigan tomorrow. Thank you for making some time with us before you depart. Appreciate it.